This podcast is brought to you by OEC and Collision Link Plus, a new product upgrade for collision repair shops designed to improve parts ordering, save more time, and capture more profits. Learn more at oeconnection.com slash collision link hyphen plus. Hey there, it's Jason Stahl with another episode of Body Shop Business, the podcast. First, I'd like to thank our friend and sponsor, OEC and Collision Link Plus. And today I have a special guest with me who was actually here a few months ago, who, the guy that I call the hardest working man in the collision repair industry, Brandon Eckenrode, the Managing Director of the Collision Repair Education Foundation. How are you, Brandon? Wonderful. Good to see you, Jason. Awesome. Great to be here. Yes. Thank you for being here. And I want to talk about the tech shortage. Big surprise, it's still around. Yep. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. We've had a tech shortage problem for a long time. And I wanted to know things that you've been doing recently, activities you've been involved in to help uh, alleviate the tech shortage and, and create a bright future for collision students. And I heard that you were recently at the school counselor uh, conference. And so talk to me a little bit about that. Absolutely. So we've heard from the industry that uh, the school counselors kind of play gatekeepers of sometimes believing that the collision repair program uh, is sometimes being perceived as the, the dumping ground for the students that are not college worthy. So as opposed to just complaining about that relationship, we wanted to start engaging with the school counselors from around the country. So through a very generous grant from our friends at General Motors, uh, we were actually one of the top sponsors at the American School Counselor Conference, a uh, conference that was held down in Austin, Texas this July, where there were over 4,000 kindergarten through high school school counselors. Um, Amber Ritter from our team master, masterfully planned out an event to where we were able to engage with the counselors, start the dialogue with them about here's what this industry is about, here's what the different career paths are, um, and it was helpful to again, start to work with them through that, through that association um, to make sure that they fully understand what those opportunities are. And we heard from them that you can't wait until high school to get in front of these students when it comes to showcasing a career. You have to start at that earlier age. So I think we're going to be using that participation at this year's event as kind of a springboard of figuring out what resources and tools we as an industry can provide the counselors so that when they're having that dialogue with their students about what careers are available to them, they have the correct information on what this industry provides as opportunities within the industry um, so that they can share that with their students and hopefully we can get, start to give this um, industry a little bit better um, perception and correct information um, to those students around the country. Sure. Uh, that sounds groundbreaking. You've never had a dialogue with those people before and I love your term gateway. What a, 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 a on-the-spot term. They are the gateway and you mentioned kindergarten through high school and to your point you know you got to start young with the kids right yep. get little toy cars in their hands when they're little and build on from there um, but that's that's awesome so I want you to also talk to me about the uh, career stu uh, student career fairs that you've been having yep. uh, you've been holding those for for several years now uh, and uh, tell me how those are going and what you have coming up sure so um as we've come out of COVID and we can start holding these in-person events again, um, we've been we did career fairs this this past spring. We're holding career fairs this fall in Minneapolis, Houston, Dallas, and Detroit, um, and then we'll have a brand new set of career fairs in the spring semester. But again, these are as natural with any kind of career fair. It's an opportunity to allow the students to meet and interact with the companies that are waiting for them. So as opposed to just allowing the instructor to stand up in front of class and say, "There's this industry out there that's." You know, ready to employ you, it's an opportunity in these markets um, for the students to physically meet local and national employers and see that it's not just the repair technician field that there is a need. Obviously, that's probably the, the most need within this industry, but there are other career paths available. And at these events, it's not just the seniors. We encourage the instructors to bring all of their students, which include not just collision, it's auto service, mechanical welding, but it, it showcases to them who's waiting for them and hopefully motivates them to stay within the programs as opposed to not knowing who and what employers are out there. Um, so we're excited to bring those back. And um, Tiffany from the craft team is managing that. And we've got a great lineup of events this fall. And then we'll be able to release the spring schedule here shortly as well. And that's great. It's you know face to face. It sounds like a almost like a mini interview, prior to the real interview. Or maybe they do. Do they do interviews at this at the fairs? At some of the events, depending on the venue um, and kind of the setup. Um, I think what you'll see here moving into 2023, um, we're going to be organizing 
somewhat what we're calling internally um, signature career fair events where we can go a little bit more in depth. So there'll be resume reviews, mock interviews, real interviews. Um, so we're excited to kind of enhance these events and then collaborating with our friends at ICAR and their volunteer committees around the country. The volunteer committees will be working together with us to hold additional career fairs um, just because you know we don't want it to be limited to the amount of time that the CREF team can be there. So collaborating with those local volunteers that are made up of industry members, they'll be able to help organize some of these events as well so we can have even more to get out in front of even more, uh, even more students. That's great. So Brandon, this past SEMA show, tell me how it went, what was your presence like there, and what was the impact? Obviously, SEMA is always a great event for us because it allows us to not only see our industry partners, but obviously connect with schools and students that are attending as well. So on, on Tuesday evening, we were able to hold what we call the Art Meets Automotive um, Industry Partner Reception. So we were able to bring that event back where it gathered not just the instructors and students, but also our industry partners and friends and supporters and also new prospective partners. We're able to see what the foundation's about and um, who we're supporting. And at that event, the students were actually, they created, you know, custom painted bowling pins and other items. Um, so there was like almost like an art display, uh, which was great to showcase um, to the industry, the skill and talent that these students have. And then on Wednesday morning, we actually had our uh, industry partner breakfast. So Melissa Marson from the CREF team, uh, who manages the grant and scholarship program for CREF, awarded hundreds of thousands of dollars in grants to the schools. And um, like I've told many times that these grants and the support that we're getting from the industry is a lifeline to these programs. Um, some of these instructors are working with crippling program budgets where this industry expects a certain quality of the graduates coming out of these programs. So if that to be possible, we need the industry support to help these local schools, high schools and colleges around the country. So it was a great week um, and we're excited about, I mean, we've even started to plan next year's already. So it was a great time at SEMA and it was great seeing everybody out there that week. Yeah. You know, you mentioned the funds that you raise are a lifeline for the schools. I think you're a lifeline for the industry. I think the Collision Repair Education Foundation is a lifeline. I don't know where we would be without you guys. I mean, you said you raised $500 million in the time you've existed through product donations and money and uh, uh, uniforms and everything else. Um, I can't thank you enough. The industry can't thank you enough. And I appreciate that, Jason. Uh, but what's important to note is that, and I've got this title in my, my LinkedIn profile, but I'm a and we are a facilitator of generosity. So we can only do what we do through our industry partners. And I, I, th I return the thanks back to you, the Full Body Shop business team, uh, for helping to get the word out, helping to promote these events and promote these activities. So we couldn't do um, and what you know help support these schools nationwide without our industry partners. So um, it's a collaboration, it's a team effort. We have a lot of work to do because we, like you said, it's still an issue that we're trying to solve. But um, I'm excited about what the the full craft team and our partners are going to be doing here moving into 2023. Well, thank you, Brandon, and, and thank you for being here today. Absolutely. Thank yep. you. I'm Jason Stahl. Thanks for watching. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to Body Shop Business, the podcast. Check out bodyshopbusiness.com for more podcasts.